again, this is Calamagrostis acutiflora cal forster, and it's now at this stage. And this to me is like a second set, a second stage of its growth. Now, just from the wind there, you can see why I really love this one. It's almost six foot at the minute, and it's in its open panicle stage, as you can see. And then what will happen after that, it will go into a tighter clump. So it will almost be back to this stage. If the wind stops blowing, we can show you. So there you go. So that's quite tight together. This one here. So that one's quite tight. And then what will happen is it will go then into a beige type colour. and then it'll go into a stiff upright form and then just carry on through autumn into winter through to next year. So it looks really good and I, I grow this both singly and on mass as here. And this is how I like to see it because once the winds really do start picking up as we get going through the year, these have a, a lovely sway about them. And again, I shall repeat myself, it is a sterile hybrid. So if you're looking to get into ornamental grasses, this would be a good choice for that. Now, another highly rated grass of mine is another Calamagrostis, and it's called Waldenbush. And this is here, the light colored one. So it's very similar to Calamagrostis Carl Forster, but not as tall, although it looks taller here, as opposed to these, it's not, and I'll just show you why in a minute. <clears throat> but it has this lovely, probably a better look than Carl Forster at this stage in its life. And I really do rate that one. So it's almost a whitey green look on this one. So Calamagrostis Waldenbush will seed around and you will find seedlings. And I have found seedlings of this one, but I really do rate this one. And it's probably not as free flowing as Calamagrostis Cal Forster, which you can see behind it as well. There's a, a single clump behind it swaying as well. So it gives you a good idea of, of how both of them act together. Now it's a good idea to try and get a few Carl Forsters and a few Walden Bush and put them together because it really does look good as a combination. And I love them. And if you've got a, a, any type of border, if you're into your flowers or your shrubs or whatever, these sort of grasses really do help with that. They help to give that bit of movement, bit of sway and a bit of sound. It's really nice. Now, when I said that Cal Forster doesn't get as, um, sorry, Waldenbush doesn't get as tall as Cal Forster, the reason that this one is quite tall is because it's about a foot taller, a foot higher in the garden than the ones on the right that you can see. So this is probably more in keeping. This is a smaller clump and the taller panicles are the taller seed heads that's about roughly maybe another six inches where it's going to get to, as opposed to the Cal Forster, which eventually will make seven foot. But remember, Waldenbush will seed around, but not excessively. And that is a real beauty, that one. And this year, it's probably been the best that I've ever seen it. So they're really impressive. Now I've used this Euphorbia here, and this is just a selected wolf any eye seedling. I've now cut back all of its flowers, and I can see I've missed out a dead, a little dead one there. That'll have to be removed. I've obviously caught that as I've been clipping, but it really does pay you to do this at this point because otherwise you're going to get overseeding. So the Cal Forster behind it, this helps to really set the Cal Forster off and the clump of Cal Forster. So we'll move down to this one, and this is a Deschampsia, and this one's called Gold Tau. And it is a really nice type of grass, and it, and, and it will come into its own in about another 
two weeks, if not three, and it will get taller. Those panicles will get taller, taller, and this particular one, Gold Tau, it means golden dew. I mean, it looks really good all the way through winter, really. It probably dies away a little bit more than some of the grasses and, and crashes and collapses, but still good right through winter. Uh, that all depends on where you are in the country, don't forget as well. So that one's Deschampsia cespitosa, gold out and cespitosa, um, Deschampsia cespitosa is native to, to the UK. So we can find quite a few of these in, in fields. And I, I treat it as a species indicator. So if it's a damp, you'll probably find a damp field, you'll probably find this one around. Now this is Hakanacloa and it's Oriola and it's pretty pretty small at the minute but look at the look on that that's beautiful it really is it's called the Japanese forest grass and it usually grows in clearings forests or at the edges of forests and it really is a nice one that eventually will make a two foot clump both in height and width but it's really nice now just behind it this one's still establishing and I've yet to make my mind up whether I think this is any good. I think it's going to be quite good, but I much, I much prefer the, the golden look as opposed to this more white silver look. And this one behind it is called Hakanakloa Samurai, but it's quite a nice one as it stands at the moment. But I look forward to that one getting a little bit taller than it is at the moment. So here we have another Deschamps here, and this one's called Scotland. And it's a lot taller than some of them. It's not there yet. It's still making its way up. It's only just beginning to flower as a lot of the Deschampsies are. But it will get there eventually. And it will become probably two, three foot tall once it gets going properly. And it's quite nice looking at this phase as well. Now, just to the right of that one in this border... There's this one, and this is another Deschamps here. And this one is a chance seedling, really, that came about as a result of me keeping my Deschamps here at a nursery of a friend's. <clears throat> and he discovered this. Uh, now, this one is one of its parents will be Deschamps here Goldschleyer. And Deschamps here Goldschleyer only makes up to three foot, really. On a good year, it'll make three foot. This is now at approximately five foot, I would say. Just under five foot. I've not measured it yet, but I suspect that's where it's at at the moment. So it's a real promising chance seedling, this. And it's on trial at the moment. Its clump is really healthy as well. So it's a really nice, almost, almost pale green. And goldy looking pale green at that as well. And it's really, really nice. So I really like that one. I really, I'm really rating it at the moment. And hopefully that one will prove to be a bit of a winner. So that's just a, a Deschamps here. Cespitosa, Goldschleyer, Chance Seedling. At the moment, I do know the two parents. Goldschleyer being one. And then I shall keep the other one a secret at the moment. This one's steeper Calamagrostis, and it's a it's a, a clump former again. Most of the ones I've shown you are clump formers, and it's doing really well. And unusually this year, it's got this almost crimped look, which is a bit bizarre because it doesn't normally have that crimped look. But on a couple of them, I've noticed it's got that crimped look, which is quite a nice look actually. But it will open up and become that clump, and it can make a two foot, three foot clump. And there comes a point on the, in that one's life when you really must split it, lift it and split it to rejuvenate it. Now, this one got split up last year and it got put back in here. And the only reason that I split it last year was because something had been laying in it and it totally collapsed it. And I'm not sure what, because all sorts of things lay in it. But I think he's the culprit. But we won't hold it against him. So this is a Miscanthus. And a really nice one. It's a condensatus and it's called Cabaret. And it's just starting to get into growth now. And it's going to make it up to about five or six feet. No more than that. 
So that one, that one's going to be a really nice one. If you're looking for some sort of little clump forming one, then that's definitely one to consider. Now this grass here, this is a Miscanthus sinensis and it's called Poseidon. Quite an old variety and quite a tall variety it will become. At the moment it's up to three and a half, four foot. And I must say this year they're doing really well. So that's going to produce the usual, the usual type of seed heads. And I believe that one to be a, let's just double check it. I can't remember if it's a gold one. No, it doesn't tell me, but I believe it to be a goldish looking seed head on that one. And it's going to be a beauty. As I said, it's quite an old variety, not so easy to get hold of. The one behind it, that's Calamagrostis Cal Forster again, and that's a single specimen. And I do, I grow this one here just to show you what it's going to look like as a single specimen. And they do, they really look good as single specimens, and they make good pot specimens as well. If you can find a good sized pots to put them in, they do really well in that. So this one's China Chlorubra, and it's a seeding like crazy this year. I've never seen it seed this much. Now that concerns me to a degree because often if things excessively seed they're, they're usually in the last years and hopefully this one's got a few years to go yet. It takes five years to get to, that to maturity and this is at year five so I hope it's not not about to curl up its toes. I don't think it will, I think it'll be fine. Now here's another Miscanthus. Now I see this as a being advertised as Saccharifloris, but I don't believe it to be. It's probably a cross Saccharifloris. So more likely to be a Gigantius type. And this one is called Jubilaris. And as I've said in previous videos, this one has this longitudinal stripe of all varying widths and amounts of striping within them. And at the moment that's six foot. It will make it up to about seven, I would say, and then that'll be the lot on that one. So that's a really, really nice one. Now this grass should only be grown in a pot, as it is here. This one's called Lamus arenarius, and it binds sand dunes at the seaside. And it's often known as the meringue grass. And it has this lovely, lovely blue look about it. But I would not put that into your garden because that one will spread around. So I'll walk up to this one as we're so close. Now this one's called Cortaderia richardii and it's kind of a pampas grass. It's a pampas grass of relative, but not exactly a pampas grass. So its common name is Toto, the New Zealand Toto grass, and it's described as the most graceful grass that you will find, and it is absolutely stunning. I like it because it's called Richard EI, or Richard EI, and I like it because of these elegant cedars, and they, are, they really are nice. It's not even got to the height it's gonna get. This one's definitely gonna to get to nine foot. Some of, the, some of the cedars will definitely push up to nine foot. They can get a higher depending where you put it. It does well on slopes, it does well in dry areas. Not too dry an area, but it does do well in dry areas. And that is a bit of a stunner, but you need to allow space for it because it can, it can become quite a sizable clump over time. And if it does, and it's too big for you, simply lift it late spring, early summer, split it in half or whatever, and put a little bit back in and pot the others up and give them away or move them around your garden because it really does look good on mass. If you can pot it all around, the, uh, place it all the right way around the garden, it looks great. It's almost a link, what we call a linking plant for the garden. So this one here is another Calamagrostis. And this one's called El Dorado. It doesn't get as tall as any of the others, but it's a really nice looking one. And it has that yellowy, creamy stem to it, which is a real nice feature. And it also has a more golden colored 
leaf which it's now going through and it turns to a more creamy leaf as well but it's a really nice one as well it's really nice if you just want to have one small grass in your garden you know you won't go far wrong with that one now this is due to damage so just take it off again this is likely to seed for you don't worry too much i've never found a seed of that one this is a cracking grass this one i really do rate this one as well this one is elemus magellanicus and a true beauty probably the bluest of all the blue grasses it likes a dry area the drier the better and it produces this wheat type seed head which is absolutely wonderful and i must say i do love this i've allowed it to seed around so it gently seeds around one there one there and there's a two or three four more over there so it's doing really really well there's another miscanthus here and this one's called miscanthus sinensis samurai and it produces this lovely winey colored leaf it's a bit of a beauty and i've coupled it up with this isla which is Carfunkelstein, just because of those combinations of those two leaves together, which work really, really well. Behind it is Elictotrichon sempervirens, and it's a beauty. It takes a, a few years to be able to get in, uh, a few years to get into its stride, and it becomes a lot bigger grass. So it'll become a three foot, if not a four foot clump, and it's very, very spiky but another bluegrass that's definitely worth having then we've got a couple of miscanthus we've got beth chateau and then we've got a little one down here called chagensis we'll not bother going into those until they really do start flowering and as a lot of the millennials panicums and some of the callum grostis aren't yet flowering we'll end with this one and this is by far one of the tallest grasses you'll ever buy if you can get hold of this one and this one is miscanthus lutaria riparius i believe true uh, loosely translates as living by the waterside so you don't want this one to live by any waterside because if it does it will run everywhere now this was mistaken for a bamboo on one of my uh, garden visits from the local garden club the other day I don't know how they mistook that one for a bamboo because it looks nothing like a bamboo. But anyway, they did. And again, it has this lovely midrib in its leaf, this white midrib. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, I've had this one in here for the last two years. Now, I have contained it with a bamboo barrier. A year and a half ago, I put a bamboo barrier inside the ring that goes down 900 millimeters down centimeters right yeah about a meter three feet it goes down and that was some hard digging but it needs it because it is really really aggressive and it will spread everywhere but here it's looking wonderful now it's now up to 10 if not 11 feet now it's shot up in the last two days by almost a foot those bigger leaves and I said I was hoping to see this at 12 foot this year. I actually think now, looking at it, looking at it today, that I think it's going to exceed that. And it really is a beauty. If you're looking for a monster, that's the one. And it really does look good at, up at grassy bottom here. It really does. So we'll end with that, but we'll just say that this is a bamboo and all bamboos are true grasses. We'll do that on another video. Okay, so that's a few grasses to consider. Hope you've enjoyed that little soiree out. If you've got any questions on grasses at all, fire away the questions at me and I'll try and answer them the best I can. Talk to you on the next one. Ta-da!